seven children. One stay to a session five. To session five, respiration. And here I would like you to uh, see one of the experiments. I want you to see and enjoy. And uh, when the school reopens, we will be right uh, if possible in a school lab also. Uh, this is anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration. That means in absence of oxygen. Now we need to check whether what is released. Uh, what do we think in anaerobic respiration we are supposed to get uh, alcohol ethanol and we are supposed to get carbon dioxide, we are supposed to get heat energy. So are we getting this three or not? We are going to check. For this we are going to set up the experiment. Let us see how we set up the experiment. First thing we have to take a test tube. In the test tube, you take glucose, glucose solution and boil the glucose solution so that all the oxygen is removed from that. And as soon as you boil that, you add a drop of Daijin green. We also call it as Janus green B or we call it as Daijin green. You add a drop to this uh, solution. What does it do? What is the use? It will whatever extra uh, oxygen is remained after boiling the glucose, it absorbs and removes. What is the use of this? It removes the extra oxygen which is uh, still present after boiling this. Then again the third, you know for milk packets, tetra pack like that uh, we call no. For ensuring that it is uh, completely closed. Very perfect experiment when we want. First thing to remove the oxygen is boil the glucose solution. The second thing is add digestive green. The third one is add liquid paraffin. Liquid paraffin. Paraffin is nothing but wax, melted wax. You add so that now the contact between the glucose and outside atmosphere is completely closed. There is no contact. What does it mean? Is there any glu uh, glucose is there? Is there any oxygen in that? No oxygen. What is our uh, experiment? Any open respiration. That means what? We should not need. We do not need oxygen. Do we have oxygen now here? How do we ensure that there is no oxygen? First, we boil the glucose solution. Second, we added Janus green tea. Third, we added paraffin, liquid paraffin. What did we add? Liquid paraffin. This is all to ensure that there is no oxygen left in the glucose solution and to see that no atmospheric oxygen will enter inside. Is that it? No. Now what we do is we put a cork, cork with two holes and one of the hole we insert thermometer. Tell me what is the use of thermometer to measure temperature. So, thermometer. In one of the holes of the cork, we insert a thermometer. In another hole, we insert a delivery tube, a capillary tube, a glass, delicate glass tube. And then, we insert that into another test tube, another test tube, and that is also one whole cork.
understand to hold the test tube and this test tube you can hold it in your hand right now this is the setup and you leave this glucose solution like that for glucose uh, in your solution what is required c6 h for glucose only is required and then what is it gives carbon dioxide, it gives energy and it gives ethanol. Ethanol. Now, what we are supposed to do is we leave it, we leave the setup like this for a few minutes and okay, take it one hour. And then you notice that there is a raising temperature that shows that what is released? Energy is released. If there is raising temperature, what is released? Energy is released. And after few Lime water starts turning. After a few minutes, it, this lime water starts turning milky. What does it say? If lime water turns milky, it is the uh, only proof that carbon dioxide is released. From where is this carbon dioxide released? Is there any other option other than from this? Because this is from where we arrange this setup. So from here, what is released? Heat energy is released. Uh, carbon dioxide is released. Now we need to check whether that is ethanol or not. What is there in this? This uh, activity has been done. What could have done this activity? Bacteria. Bacteria might have conducted the aerobic respiration and afterwards if you remove this and you smell it also, you don't need to even put it near your mouth, uh, near your nose, you get the congealed powder of alcohol. It shows that aerobic respiration took place and this is the equation which is applied here. So that is this uh, uh, experiment about. Next, you have combustion. Glucose is burnt. I will do the same thing out of my body also. When I am saying that glucose is burnt inside my body, I will burn it outside also and then see whether it, it does happen like that or not. I want to all to once go through this in your textbook and read it. It is really an enjoyable experiment. It is not a big deal. Uh, many things are also not there for you to remember. Once go through, you think that it's very easy and when you think it is easy, it is enjoyable for you to memorize it. I am going to write it. Okay children? I don't know how you are enjoying your holidays, but we are not enjoying much without you. It's so boring for us. Uh, we are trying to stay in connection with you through these videos and the evidence that's the reason I am asking you. If you have any doubts, so please think me and we will enjoy answering the questions. Right. Now, this is called glucose when it is burnt out of our body, we call it as combustion. Glucose when it is burnt out of our body, we call it as combustion. So, let us take this setup like this. Glucose, I am not drawing the complete experiment uh, and I don't want to waste much of your time. You go through the textbook, it's easy for you. Uh, take a test tube and then take glucose in it. Okay, and then take a burner, burner, Bunsen burner, and then um, lit it. Okay, glucose, sugar, you take sugars, and then you uh, put a thermometer here, and then you insert a capillary tube, and insert, oh my god. I am, yeah. Okay. You use light water here and then you start burning. At this setup, uh, you draw the sand and everything, you are all better than me. Uh, draw the things and then make it possible for yourself. This is the fork. We have to close it, right? So now, what we understand is, after burning, after burning, what happens when the same glucose is burned in our body? Inside our cells are becoming black. Are they getting burned? No. But here, the test tube becomes charred. Black. It becomes so black. And the glucose, this sugar also becomes black. Ask your mommy when she is preparing the uh, sweets and all the sugar setup and everything. Then have to leave it like that on the stove. It becomes all black. She will beat you later. Then it will become blue and bluish black. So, it is what is happening. This becomes black, but in our body it doesn't become like that. And after some time, suddenly the heat increases. Suddenly the heat increases, the temperature of the thermometer shows so much. And then carbon dioxide is released. That means heat is released, heat energy is produced, carbon dioxide 
reaction is produced? Glucose is burnt. Glucose is burnt. You are using external energy, external heat to burn that. But what is the difference from combustion versus respiration? Combustion versus respiration. This is your final topic. And I want you to once listen carefully. This glucose is burnt in both the situations. Glucose is burnt. In both the situations, oxygen is used. In both the situations, heat energy is produced. In both the situations, carbon dioxide is produced. And in both the situations, uh, you get a little moisture. Both are same. What is different? First thing is here, sugars become charred. Sugar charring takes place. It gets burned. And heat energy is produced suddenly. Sudden heat. Sudden energy is produced. In our body, step by step, step by step it is produced. In our body, no sugars is charred and our cells are not burnt. And energy is released slowly, step by step, so that everything is cool and collectively taking place. So very well planned, unlike this. And carbon dioxide is transmission. And just imagine, I pour water in this. Will it burn? If I pour water in this, will it burn? It does not burn. Suddenly it will stop burning. In our body, without water, is there any one single cell present? Every burning takes place in presence of water. That is the difference between combustion and respiration. I hope you enjoyed this. Read uh, in the textbook, you will understand it better. If you still have any doubts, I will explain it a little in detail later. Now, if this is about humans, how is it happening in other organisms? In amoeba, imagine. Amoeba, respiration, how does it take place? Hydra, how does it take place? In the ninth class, we learned about the levels of organization in animals, animal kingdom. I am going to explain that now. So, in uh, insects, how does it take place? In fish, how does it take place? In uh, uh, amphibians, how does it take place? In human beings, of course, you know. In amoeba, just diffusion. Simply the gases will come inside and go outside. That's all. Exactly like that in hydra also. In insects, tracheal. Tracheal respiration. Tracheal is a tracheal respiration. In fish, gills are there. Branchial respiration. In gills, uh, in fish, gills are there. Branchial respiration takes place. In amphibians, cutaneous respiration. Cutaneous, cutaneous respiration as well as in amphibians, skin as well as earthworms also cutaneous respiration and amphibians, skin as well as lungs. Book lungs are there, no? right? Human beings, lungs. So these are the various respiratory um, organs and respiration, types of respiration in various other organisms. Now, I want to also go through this textbook. Tomorrow, I will explain to you in the next session. How the respiration takes place in plants? Plants also respire because plants are also living organisms. So with this, I conclude this uh, session. I hope you enjoyed. But you will know better and you will understand better if you go through your textbook. I really wish that you do that. 